The release of the new Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 is right around the corner, and if you guys have been watching, you know that here at Game Ranks, it's one of our favorite video game franchises ever. So if you haven't been paying attention, we're gonna get you guys caught up with 10 things you need to know about the game before it releases in September. Let's get started off with number 10 and talk about one of the most important things, the music. The Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series has always been known for its soundtrack, and for a lot of people, these games were pretty eye-opening to a lot, music-wise. You gotta think, a lot of people were, were young to teenagers when they played these games, and these are bands and artists that a lot of people still listen to today, because you were exposed to it thanks to these games. So, this time around, it seems like not much is changing. There are a lot of old artists that are making it in. Once again, like Goldfinger, obviously, Anthrax, Suicidal Tendencies, and Styles of Beyond. But with a new generation of players, we also get a new generation of music added along with it. Vicarious Visions, the developers, are adding 37 new artists to the soundtrack, on top of all the old stuff we're getting, including A Tribe Called Quest, Screaming Females, Alex Leahy, Token, An American Nightmare, and 33 others. We don't have time to name them all, but yeah. There's a good mix of old, new, and everything in between, and multiple genres. Honestly, can't wait to kickflip around the warehouse level jamming out to Rage Against the Machine and A Tribe Called Quest. You know, it's like the closest I'll get to my dream Rock the Bells lineup. Also, just a heads up, if you are excited and you want to know the full details, uh, there is an official Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 playlist on Spotify. If you want to check it out early, go get it. Now over at number 9, the gameplay is absolutely up to par with what you'd expect from a cleaned up classic version of the old games. After spending lots of time with the pre-order demo we got access to, it plays much better than Tony Hawk 5 and the previous remaster attempts by a long shot. They based it off the original design code which they had access to and modernized slightly so it's a little faster, a little weightier and more aggressive but still very much true to feel. Your muscle memory should return. Manuals manual tricks, spine transfers, and the revert are all there so you can combo around a level to your heart's content like the later games. There's a little more we'll touch on in a bit, but we do know that there are some options. You can level up and unlock more slots to put more special moves in it. You can also still pause and look up moves anytime, but it's also worth pointing out that there are some good accessibility and practice options for beginners. From the menus, you can switch on perfect rail balance and no falls, meaning it's great for practicing some new lines out or or maybe so disabled folks will be able to have a bit more fun with the game. Typically in the past, this stuff used to be relegated to cheat codes you'd have to input or unlock throughout the game, and options are always really good here. Just don't use them to cheat against your friends. Now next at number 8, we have to talk about the skaters themselves. First off, let's get it out of the way. The OG roster from the first two games are returning. So you'll be skating around as Tony Hawk, Eric Costin, Rodney Mullen, Steve Caballero, Elisa Steamer, Kareem Campbell. But what's really cool and just clever is that they're aging the roster realistically, so they won't be in their 20s or 30s, but will instead be their actual real appearance and age. All of these skaters are now in their 40s and almost 50s, so you're gonna be skating around as really cool middle-aged parents who were probably cooler than I'll ever be at that age for sure. Now along with the OG roster, we're getting eight new additions. Lizzie Armanto, Riley Hawk, Nigel Houston, Tyshawn Jones, just to name a few. And as you know, each Tony Hawk game has some really cool, unlockable characters. That was like half the fun back in the day. So if you've played the series, you should be familiar with the classic character Officer Dick, who, thanks to a data mine, seems to be in the game, but this time around it looks like he's being portrayed by Jack Black. That's not totally officially confirmed, but it seems likely. You know, he's no stranger to video games at this point. He's a YouTuber. <laughs> but the big thing we're really looking forward to is seeing what other wacky unlockable characters we get to see because the way licensing works we're probably not going to get Django Fett or Darth Maul again. Spider-Man is something that's way trickier now in 2020 and is probably maybe up in the air a little bit but we have our fingers crossed that we might see Crash Bandicoot since Activision owns the hell out of him. Now, moving on to number seven, let's get negative for a second, microtransactions. Everybody asks about them. It has been confirmed that there will be no microtransactions at launch. A representative from Vicarious Visions said, everything that you see at launch is going to be unlocked with gameplay. We're not planning on having monetization at launch. Now, at launch is the key word here. Just because they don't launch with them doesn't mean that they won't be added down the line, which is exactly what happened with Crash Team Racing. You know, microtransactions were notoriously added after 
launch and after the game was reviewed by YouTubers and websites and all that, which definitely was a weirder decision that made a lot of people not very happy. So thankfully, nothing is being kept from players, but the representative also went on record to say that if there is demand for more content that they might be added down the line. I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't mind paying for like an expansion down the line that gives us a bunch of maps and skaters from another game in the series. But weird individual aspects of monetization in game like skins and stuff is something I, I really don't want to see or be asked to pay for. At, at the very least, at least they're acknowledging no microtransactions in the game before the game launches. But of course, with something like this, we're just going to have to wait and see. Now, next up at number six, this is more of a straight up feel good fun fact point. Uh, in the world of skateboarding and in the new Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game, there is a trick that is being renamed to honor its creator. Mute Air or the Mute Grab is a trick that was created by Chris Weddle back in the early 80s. Now, instead of being called something like Weddle Air or something like that, it was called Mute Air, which unintentionally or, or not kind of poked fun at the fact that Chris Weddle is deaf. Tony Hawk himself shared a post on Instagram talking about the Mute Air and Chris Weddle and how the trick is going to be renamed in game to honor his legacy, to which Chris Weddle responded to saying that he was stoked, which is great. Anyone who invents a skateboarding trick deserves the proper recognition. And it leads to the question like what other new changes or reveals or surprises will this game have? We're very much looking forward to seeing like what else a Tony Hawk game brings to the skateboarding table in 2020. Now, next at number five, one thing very much worth pointing out, there's a lot of good feedback in the game. New animations give characters' bodies a bit of a bounce when they land. You know, sloppy moves and perfect moves look way more convincing when they happen just in terms of how the characters' bodies move around. There's a really good vibration and camera shake feel when you come down from the air on a vert ramp. Lots of little things that keep the original gameplay intact, but make it feel a little bit more, you know, next generation. Another bit of positive feedback added is literal positive feedback from your character. In the demo, where you could only play as Tony Hawk himself, he would cheer and woohoo and oh yeah when pulling off a good combo or special move, stuff like that. It's fun and exciting and gives the game a bit more of a fun time vibe, but if you're a high level player, it's gonna get old fast. I don't mind it, but when I posted gameplay, it's all anyone complained about. I think it's fine, it's goofy, maybe a little annoying. Hopefully there's an option to turn it off. No big deal, but worth pointing out. Now, next at number four, of course you need to know that Create a Skater and Create a Park are both returning. The old games were legendary for giving you an unprecedented amount of creativity, and you used to be able to make some crazy skate park courses and over-the-top custom-created characters. I spent a lot of time doing this back in the day. So, we don't know all the details about the features, but the official website says there are a few new features added. We've gotten some glimpses of created custom characters who all look fine and good, but I, I still need to see if we can make crazy stupid looking over the top characters because that was half the fun you know just making a generic skater isn't good enough for me i'll just play one of the main skaters then let me make a big giant monster man please activision uh, create a park is also the same deal you know we know it's coming but we've only gotten small glimpses of it we've seen some big crazy ramps paths street lights quickly referenced but no actual real running gameplay of it as of the time of making this video that being said it's a whole new world in 2020 with the internet being how it is and you can share all of your creations online so so I'm looking forward to seeing the creativity out there as long as the feature set truly allows for it. Now down to number three for the graphics. In person, running on a good TV or monitor, this game really looks very solid. They're apparently pushing for 4K 60 FPS, and from what we've seen, things are nice and smooth, although we haven't been able to get super analytical with it yet. Animations are great, which we mentioned earlier, and the character models are modern and impressive, but the thing that made the biggest difference in the warehouse demo level is the lighting. When it catches your character or just the level and the environment itself just right, you can appreciate how good this game does really look. As a longtime fan of this series, I just want to point something out. Like, this game could end up looking like poo poo garbage. As long as the gameplay is solid and fun, that's what I'm here for. But hey, it does look really good, and we're glad attention is being paid to graphics and audio big time. But coming down to number two, let's talk multiplayer. First and foremost, Couch Co-op is here, the mode that started it for all of us. Uh, we're really glad they're not leaving it in the dust like a lot of other modernized franchises have. Vicarious Visions developer COO confirmed that the classic modes are returning and you can play them on the couch with your friend, you know, stuff like graffiti, score challenge, etc. But you'll also have the option to play all of this stuff online too. 
uh, really put your skills to the test. And you should, man, because there are some crazy players out there. So between couch co-op, online multiplayer, and the ability to share your created parks and stuff, this should theoretically be pretty simple, but pretty good online stuff. Now down to number one, of course, we have some housekeeping to take care of. So here's the details. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 is launching on September 4th on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Now, as with all games that release now, there are a few different editions if you're cynical. Uh, of course, there's the $40 base edition, then there's the $50 deluxe edition that comes with retro outfits for Tony Hawk, Rodney Mullen, and Steve Caballero, uh, retro content for create a skater mode, and also the Powell Peralta Ripper skater from their logo, which is really damn cool. Uh, then there's also the $100 collector's edition that has all the deluxe edition stuff, plus a limited edition birdhouse deck. Yes, it is a real skateboard, so if you want to pick up skating now, you have a board. You just got to figure out how to build it. Now, on the Xbox store listing, it says it's going to be a 60 gigabyte download, which it's safe to assume that it'll be that size or similar on other platforms. Also, just a heads up for the PC crowd, it's going to be using Denuvo. But regardless of the platform you're playing on, we hope this game turns out good. Like I said, we're longtime fans of the series, but we can also be a little cynical at times, so we're going to wait and make the final judgment call on the game when we get our hands on the final version. So be sure to keep an eye out for a before you buy video, of course. And if you learned anything from this video, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. And if you're new, maybe consider subscribing because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.